The premieres, yeah, the Street Fighter premieres are, I mean, look at this, right? Check this out. If I go to attendees, check out the attendees list. All right, look at the attendees list for Street Fighter alone. I should zoom this in a little bit more. All right, look at this little shit, right? Fujimura, Tokido, Fudo, Infiltration, Oil King, Justin, Sako, Daigo, Knuckle Dude, Gachikun, Bonchan, Momochi, Shanghai, Haitani, Dogra, Akainu. Man, he's like a, he's like a 25 or 26 on CPT rankings too. Mojo, Itabashi, Storm Kubo, Cool Kid, Mago, Punk, Gamer Beast, Smug, Kazunoko. That's only 25 entrants. Tokido second seed. It's based on CPT ranking. Technically, Tokido is third overall on CPT rank. Kazunoko, we got Shax, John Takuchi, CJ Truth, Human Bomb, Chris CCH, who by the way last night beat Oil King and um, John Takuchi. Ricky, Toy, Alex Myers, Neon, Neon's coming? Jeez, everybody's coming. Look at this, it fucking keeps going. Jesse, Snake Eyes, Shine, Cave Rat, PR Rock, Strider, Samurai, Pinoy, Chris G, Dankadia, Stupend. Look at it, it just keeps going. It just keeps going. It never stops. Like, there's so many players for Street Fighter. And that's not counting Tekken or Dragon Ball or in the Injustice Pools are an abomination. Not that they're, like, horribly seated or anything, but they're just, like, the amount of good players there that have to play each other is absurd. Um, look at this. Tekken. Joey Fury, Jimmy, Speed Kicks, Dimax, Shadow... Tekken Master. Tekken Master actually has chance to get a lot of points on the Tekken World Tour leaderboard this weekend. Trongy Peeling Nishin, uh, Poke Chop, Sparrow. By the way, this is not counting JDCR and Saint, who are coming to SCR also. This isn't even a master event. It's a challenger event for Tekken. There's 150 points for first place. Keep in mind. And Jimmy J. Tran needs those 150 points, by the way. Because he is, like, right on the cusp of qualification. Joy Fury is kind of like that, too, actually. This is a big, big deal. Yeah, there's seven premieres for Street Fighter in a row. Two of them are on the same weekend, right? Because, yeah, Taiwan Fighter, Esports Hong Kong, uh, China Event, DreamHack Montreal, SCR, and then next weekend is EGX and uh, Tokyo Game Show at the same time. Right? That's crazy to think about. And then, you know, we're not even counting. Dragon Ball is fucked up. Dragon Ball is fucked up for a uh, s Dragon Radar event, right? Because look at this. Sonic Fox, Kazunoko, Dogra, Reynolds, Breaker Dave, Cloud805, The Noonster, The Kill Sage, Nakil, Apology Man, Chris J Like, everybody's here. Theo, everybody's here. It just keeps going. Like, there's so many good Dragon Ball players at just, like, an event that's, like, random. <laughs> it's not even, like... The thing is, it's not even a Saga event. You don't win a Dragon Ball for this, right? It's like, Moke is going to? Jesus Christ. I didn't know Moke was coming. So Moke is not only there, but he's in the Street Fighter bracket as well. Man, that's crazy to think about. And then, dude, Injustice is a bonkers. Check this out, right? 61 people, right, for Injustice. But the top 16 players are the current top 16 rankings on the IPS leaderboard, right? Which is already like, all right, that, that's pretty wild, right? But like, if you look at the pools, right? Like, what pool was I looking at earlier? Was it this one? If you look at this pool, all right, Rewind versus Han Rashid first round, Tekken Master versus Serpentaurus, and then Hero Killer Stain is down right next to Tekken Master 2. That's crazy, right? Sonic Fox, Revolver, Happy Pow, John Nitty is first rounds. And also, this is a cra this cannot be first round. I cannot believe this is real. Illusions versus Newbie. Like, what the fuck? This isn't a Saga event. This is a Dragon Radar event for Dragon Ball. But this is a big Injustice event, in case you guys don't know. So that's why everybody's trying. This is like everybody's trying to get their last minute points to secure it. Tweety, wow, Nubcakes is in this pool with White Boy. Oh, and Irish Mantis and Marina's first round. <laughs> Jesus Christ, this bracket is fucking wild. Injustice is crazy. I can't believe this bracket. Biohazard, Big D is right here, actually. <laughs> this, how do they meet up here? It's not even winner's finals of the pool. 
Oh, man. That's brutal. Silver Eyes in this pool, too? That's crazy, man. This is the only one I haven't looked at yet, I guess. <laughs> so, Mijima might play Vendetta. And then Scars on this side with Chico Katana Prime. Lord Gandalf. That's a solid name. I like that. It's not... Yeah, it's only two make it out of each pool, by the way. It's not three out. Gross. Guamo and Gross are on this side. With Gur. Oh, no. And they have to play here to get up and see who's going to play against Samij, Scar, KP. Like, this side of the bracket's super crazy. Yeah. It's, it's a super small bracket, too. That's what's crazy, right? 60 people. So it just feeds into a top eight bracket. Which is wild. I can't wait to watch Injustice this weekend. I don't actually have that many hours of work. I'm commentating two hours Friday and four hours on, uh, what's it called? Four hours on uh, Sunday. Or Saturday, sorry. And Sunday, I'm not doing anything. So I'm chilling. So I get to watch all the finals for everything. So I just get to enjoy the weekend. All right, let me look at this. 166 for Dragon Ball. Are any of them, like, super stacked? This is Kazunoko's pool, huh? Sonic Fox, first seed, that makes sense. Number one on the PGRZ. I forgot that that was going to be a thing. Yeah, I'm down. This weekend, I'm not that busy at noon. Like I was saying, my schedule is Friday. I commentate from... What time is it? I think 4 to 6. I got to look again at the schedule. And then I think uh, Saturday, my schedule is like... 12 to 2, and then I think 6 to 8 is my schedule. I don't think I'm very busy either day. That's like all I have. So, yeah, I'm relatively open. And then Sunday, Sunday I should be open all day. It's only a challenger event for Tekken, but it's still pretty stacked despite that. If you look at the players list, so the people who are currently, it's this schedule is, yeah, the schedule is messed up. Not only for the SAR one that they posted, but the CBT one I just looked at. The cells are mislabeled, so it's hard to figure out what the times are. So in terms of this, right, if you look at the... Let's look at, uh, let's just open up the TWT standings in a second here, I guess, right? If you look at the uh, l attendee list here, like... Um, a lot of these people are in an interesting position when it comes to points, right? So open this uh, standings up. If you take a peek at standings... Uh, obviously, all of this is unaffected by this because many of these players are going to... Well, sort of. They're at Rev Major, a lot of them. Except for I heard the Rocks boys aren't going to make it because of hurricanes and stuff for Typhoons. Um, so in terms of people who are here who need points, Dimeback's at 20, which, by the way, 20 doesn't qualify you for TWT. It's 19 and up. 20th player is going to have to come in through the LCQ. So here this weekend, that can be affected by points. Joey Fury, who we saw right here, right? Let me just drag this over here so it's easier. Joey Fury, um, you just sent me a question on what? Twitter or something? I'm not reading my phone. I'll look at it in a second. So Joey Fury, right, uh, who is at 16th, which is a very unsafe position, right? 16th. Jimmy, who is at uh, 18, also very unsafe. And I think this is his last tournament that he's attending for a while, or he plans to anyway, right? Uh, Speed Kicks, who I think is at, like, 21 or something. He's at, like, 21 or 22. Yeah, 21, right? So this right here is, like, what? This is, um, 16, 8, 16, 18, 21, and 20 on the leaderboards are right here in this. So this is, like, a really contested position on the leaderboards to be in, right? Because it's just straight, you get cut off if you're not there. Uh, I brought up Tekken Master because he actually is at like 70 100 points and he's at 100 points which means if he like does super well this weekend he could actually be in the top 20. <laughs> just crazy right um shadows at 27 who we brought up uh earlier and uh he is here right he's the fifth spot trungy i think is also right around in this area somewhere yeah 30. and then uh peeling who is right here 35. Uh, Pokechop also has a bunch of points. Spirogen, Bin Chang also could use the points too. Ricky could use the, basically everybody here, right? All of these, man, this bracket is fucked up. And it's got a lot of players, right? Is Chanel here? No, no, no. Chanel is planning to go to Rev Major. Uh, oh yeah, and that's right. The other thing I mentioned earlier is that Saint and JDCR are coming to this tournament. Last minute, right? Super last minute. 
Like, I don't think any, they're not even on this attendee list currently. They're just going to appear, the Echo Fox Gatekeepers, which is a big deal for guys like Jimmy, Joey. Actually, basically this top five is who could use the points, right? Yeah, Chanel and Saint, or sorry, Chanel and Saint. Uh, Chanel and Neve tweeted about not being able to go to Red Major because of Typhoon. I saw this picture and I was like, oh, cool, they're coming. And then I looked closer and I was like, when did Saint get a beard? Look at this beard. <laughs> Look at that. That's crazy. That beard is sick, right? I'm impressed that he can grow such a full beard. Is that sick? He's going to show up this weekend with the beard. He's going to be in training in the mountains for season two. That shit is, that shit is sick. All right, he just showed up with this random beard. <laughs> oh, man, that's pretty good. Bearded gaming community. He made it to the BGC. Man, I'm so happy. Somebody tried to give me one of those hats, the balding gaming community or balding gamer community. They tried to give me one of those hats. I was like, hell no, keep that away from me. I don't want to be part of that. I'm revoking my membership. I don't even have a subscription to BGC Magazine. I turned it in. I was like, nope, cancel that shit. Send it to my neighbors. I don't want it at all. Well, I guess we should start looking at Street Fighter Pools. Um, we, I talked a little bit about all these brackets, but Street Fighter Pools is probably a good start since I'm doing Street Fighter this weekend. It makes sense to probably take a peek at Street Fighter. There's a lot of pools for Street Fighter, though, isn't there? There sure are. Okay. The attendees list is already crazy enough, uh, to be honest with you. Let's turn on some music. Some music. Uh, man. Fujimura, obviously first seed overall. This guy doesn't give a fuck, huh? He just shows up to everything. It doesn't matter if... Um, it doesn't matter if, like, he's first on the leaderboards. He's ahead of everybody by, like, a country mile. He just keeps showing up. Filipino man says, Michael Na going to pull the upset. Well, here's my read on this bracket, right? So, Michael Na defeats Southpaw, defeats Fujimura, then runs into Guilty right down here, and lost to Guilty last night at uh, Super Arcade. So, loses here, and then Fujimura gets the run back and loses bracket. It's the most likely... Hey, get out of the screen. Most likely uh, path we'll see here, right? Guilty in this bracket, Toy. I heard Toy, uh, yeah, what's with this triple question mark? Do you guys know this triple question mark situation? I've seen a lot of players with the triple question mark. Um, they looking for a sponsor. It must be a sponsor though, right? Because they've been flying people out to events, I think. Yeah, Mira is very good, Ibuki player. Alejandro Myers is in this pool as well. Man, he's on toy side. That could be a potential match here that puts into... To oh, wow. It only seeds you in the top 32. Or this bracket only takes you to top 32. Damn, 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 damn. Yeah, this is a tough pool. Tokido. Somebody said Neon's in this pool. Man, this is tough. Tokido's gonna have to run into, before he even gets to somebody like Neon, he's gonna have to run into some tough opponents, right? Kama's here too, oh boy. With On this side is Ricky. Neon is is uh, a big threat in this pool too. Potential top 32 or winner semis match here. Is this in the first set of pools that's happening, 6 p.m.? Yeah, so I'll likely get to commentate this. Man, that's pretty good. Almost as good as that thousand bits. Thanks very much for the uh, bit of Rooney's. That's very kind of you. Yeah, Secret sponsored Punko previously. Man, this is tough. This is this is a, this is a landmine right here. I'm telling you, Tokido better protect his neck because this, this is dangerous. It's a dangerous place to be in. I think both of those pools, though, the favorite is obviously probably. Wait a minute, where does the seating dump them? So, to Fujimura and Tokido, right? They're in BA 1 and 2. They probably don't end up in the same place, right? Fujimura, where does Tokido end up? On the opposite side? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, I just want to make sure. BA 3, Fudo. Uh, yeah, he's pretty high on the rankings, especially now that he got that W over in... Uh, 
the the Hong Kong event? Where did he get the where did he get the win? I'm trying to remember. Taiwan? I don't remember. One of those it was Sako won Taiwan and then he won Hong Kong, right? And then Oil King won China. Hey, Filipino man's in this pool. Okay. And Blarlad. Blarlad first round against Fudo. I'm telling you, if you're not ready, that could be tough. Um man, this is a really hard pool. Kramor, is this gonna be Manat Manat right here? Or is Kramor gonna pick another character? And then could run into Fudo here before top th or the uh, qualifier match. Chris CCH, who last night, by the way, defeated Oil King and John Takuchi at uh, Super Arcade Tournament. Um, Commander Jesse on this side with Nick Tanella. That's crazy, actually. Man, first round, brutal. Uh, this is a part of the 6 p.m. pools as well. I'm most interested in the 6 p.m. pools because they're the ones I'm commentating. So I think that's B, A through 4. Be A1 through 4, excuse me. So I have great matches, it looks like, in my set of pools, right? Because Tokido, Fudo, um, and uh, Fujimura's pools are all so far. And uh, they're really, really strong players in all their pools. There's no way that at least one of them doesn't get upset, right? That's There's got to be. BA4 must also be the 6 p.m. pools. Infiltration. These are the top four seeds, correct? Uh, if you look at standing. I believe these are the top four seeds, so that would make sense. Yeah, top four seeds overall. Obviously, CPT events seed on uh, CPT rankings. And so the current top four is Fujimura, Problem X, who's not here, so he's not on the thing, uh, Tokido, Fudo, and then I think Infiltration is fifth overall. Fifth or sixth? Uh, he's sixth, actually, because NL is fifth. So it's based on CPT seedings. Yeah, just head on over to just type in smash.gg. And then look at your upcoming events, and SCR would, would be there. You would think they were seated based on CPT ranking. Well, look, it's not always like that. But, yeah, that's generally the rule, right, for CPT events. That's how they do it. Because if you look at Capcom, Pro Tour, slash standings. So, yeah, Fujimura's first seed, right? Problem X would be second seed if he's here, but instead it goes to Tokido. Then it's Fudo. Then it would go to NL, but obviously he's not here, so it goes to Infiltration. See what I mean? That's how they seed the top four. It's not a rule at all. Yeah, but that's usually what they do. Except there's obvious exceptions to the rule, right? There's obvious exceptions to the rules because there are players who are not, you know, they don't have it. Like, like uh, Nemo last year didn't have a lot of CPT points, but you're not going to not seed him because of that, right? Yeah, there's the thing about the CPT is that there's no, there's, a lot of the rules that you would expect to be standardized for a circuit are not standardized. In fact, it's mostly like just grassroots events, running tournaments in whatever format they feel like, unless Capcom is really angry at them. And uh, what's it called? Yeah, you sort of just do that. <laughs> it Because it's just a, it's a collection of grassroots events, just all leading into one circuit. So there's like a set of standardized rules, but not all of it is like, you know, Set in stone. I need music. Uh, all right. Send the Capcoms their way. The Capcoms are cool by me. Infiltration is cool. He's the fourth seed, as we mentioned. So seeds, uh, the first four pools here are the uh, top four seeds, right? Uh, Pugera, that's that's a dangerous opponent to run into. Does he have any information on his Smash GG page? 200. 57th at Street for whoa. Okay. Uh, Pugera down there. I don't think, does he actually play Ibuki in this game? He doesn't play Ibuki, right? He plays another character. Oh, Kami, yeah. I was gonna say, I don't think he plays Ibuki. General Azad, Human Bomb. Damn, Human Bomb and Snake Eyes, Daily Tank. This is a tough pool, actually. Although Infiltration has pretty good character matchups, right? Because besides Bison here, Bison is a little scary. Kami, he's pretty good against usually. But on the opposite side of the bracket, he has Chun Li, like Geef, slash Akuma. He'll probably play Akuma. Right? These are favorable matchups for Minot. Or at least, like, winnable matchups. You don't want to run into characters that you can't fight with. Uh, BA5. Oil King. Is he the fifth seed? Whoa, he is. He must be. He's like six or seven, right? Seven, yeah. That's interesting. 
Complaining about Balrog in the chat when Brian F is here, that's a dangerous strategy. Oil King, Squall, Raikatsu. Raikatsu, I feel like, always comes to SCR. CJ Truth, whoa. Man, he has a good chance to get some points this weekend, right? He played really, very well at uh, Montreal. Um, he said, I have a sword, Brian. Oh, boy. Defend yourself. Uh, I have CJ Truth this year with Shine. Wow, that's crazy, man. This is a tough pool. So on this side of the bracket, it's going to be a battle between a bunch of different players to try to make it to pre presumably, I guess, Oil King, if, as long as he's like the favorite over here, but who knows, right? Man, oh man, oh man. Yeah, Poketop plays Street Fighter Five. He plays Yurian. He's pretty good. Oil King won the uh, China event, which had a $20,000 pop bonus only to first place, right? So he got like an extra 20k on top of like the normal CPT money, which is 7,500 for first. You can buy a fucking closet full of short shorts for that much. He played Abel in Street Fighter Four, yeah. Pool six, Justin Wong. Um, Bushin Snile, Diddy Mo Koff, who's been staying in Vegas, so SoCal not too far from him. John Takuchi, who got into SoCal, I don't know if it was yesterday or the day before, but he was at Super, Super Arcade yesterday in that tournament. He got fourth. <clears throat> Sherry, uh, whoa, K Brad is in this pool too. This is a tough pool. <clears throat> Most of these pools seem like they're pretty tough, actually. You'd cop a KBBQ grill with 27K. You're like, Super Noon is like that definition of. FGC player who goes to tournaments and eats KBBQ like four nights in a row. You're like that guy. Sanko, Kendevu is in this tournament? That's so weird. What is Kendevu doing in Southern California? K Brad is currently unsponsored. Yeah, he was with Ghost and he's not anymore. Half the people in that pool are sponsored by cryptocurrency. Oh, yeah, ESC is K Brad and Sherry, right? Is there somebody else in this pool that's ESC? I don't think so, right? <clears throat> Sako, Kindevu, which is so weird. He was playing soccer the last time I saw him play. I don't know if he's still playing soccer. I think he got like ninth or 13th at Evo Japan playing soccer. It was so weird. It was, she was like out for a week. Uh, Little Evil Neon Beatdown, which is not Neon, the, unless he's doing the PC Marvel God strength. Um, right? Yeah, okay. Uh, Shax. On this side of the bracket with PR Rog. Um, yeah, Shax has a decent chance against Sako. Didn't he play Sako and had like a super close set with him recently at one of the tournaments? It was like versus fighting or something. Yeah, Sako has a bye. He has to play the winner in this match. And then they play. He beat Sako? I thought it was a close match. He destroyed him? Oh boy. Well, then Shax has a pretty good chance then, right? So considering he's beaten him before. Yeah, when Laura gets in, it's very tough. She just has to get in, which I don't think is that bad in that matchup, but, you know. It makes sense. I think that of the first seven pools we've looked at so far, there'll be at least two to three upsets over the, the first seed in the pool, right? It's their tough turn. These are tough, tough brackets. Daigo versus Arlie at the first round. Jeez. Rob TV in this bracket. What is with this mystery triple question mark? It's a private sponsorship. Who's sending all these people everywhere? It's like Spiro had this, Pokechop had this, Rob TV has this. There's so many players. Toy had it. I don't know who it is. Dropkick's Valiant in this bracket. Kazunoko with Chris Wynn. Uh, 801 Strider. Jeez. Who's the most dangerous person to Daigo in this bracket? It's got to be Kaz, right? Kaz, Kaz Daigo is pretty dangerous. Although Kazunoko has to make it through Chris Wynn and Strider first. Which, you know, this is... Like, he has good fights there, right? Kami Akuma, fine. Cammy Laura, fine. He just has to get to Daigo Guile, who has to be most likely Arlieth and is going to be Vega. Vega's not too bad. He just lost to that Vega player over somewhere. And then uh, Rob DV. What is he going to do against Daigo? He's going to play the mirror. He plays him. He has to be Valiant. That's interesting. It's interesting to think about. This is uh, all the Friday pools, by the way. So Friday, there's a lot of really good players playing already, right? Strider might play G. Oh, yeah, that, that makes sense. Uh, that's a lot of really good players. We saw, like, Tokido, Fujimura. I mean, that's actually just the top eight seeds, right? 
So Fujimura, Tokido, Fudo, Infiltration, Oil King, Justin, Sako, and Daigo are playing tomorrow. Right? So if you guys are watching um, SCR tomorrow, you'll see all of them play. Uh, all right. So this, let's take a look at uh, Saturday. Yeah, Knuckle Dude, Mad King first round. Oh boy. That's pretty scary, actually. Element in this pool, Smug. Smug, Slavic, Gold, first round. Oh boy. Samurai in this side of the bracket as well. Smug will play a uh, Balrog in most of these matchups, right? Unless he has to play. Well, Knuckle Dude, he'll play Balrog also. Knuckle Dude beat him at Montreal, actually. This is the easiest pool in the tournament with Knuckle Dew and Smug and Samurai. That's still pretty difficult. Yeah, if this is the easiest pool, this is a pretty hard pool. Question mark Samurai. Yeah, he's with him too. Knuckle Dew beat Smug at Montreal. His record against Smug recently is not great, right? So that was a pretty big win for him. Gotchkun. Yanub is in this bracket. Combo Fiend? Is this the Combo Fiend? Oh yeah, he said he was gonna play at SCR, right? I think he entered a bunch of games. Didn't he? Yeah, that's the one. Everybody figured out that he's the he was the producer on Spider-Man. They're like, what? He's working for Marvel? That picture came out forever ago about him working there, right? Combo Fiend is very good. Two people out of pools. Yeah, he plays uh, Cody. You know what he is very good at is Guilty Gear. Every time I go to Super Arcade, there's like not that many Guilty Gear players on Friday. And Combo Fiend's always there. And there's a setup for Guilty Gear. And I'm like, hey man, let's play some Guilty Gear. Uh, Mattis Mao, Urian. Yeah, I've seen Mattis Mao play, I feel like. Or I've heard the name before. Gamer B versus John Rog on this side of the bracket with Pinoy. That's scary. Pinoy is a dangerous man in this bracket. Pinoy Gamer B is going to be an interesting match, although unfortunately for Pinoy, it's a tough matchup for Bison. She does the drawings of Urian. That's probably why I've seen it then, because uh, I've probably retweeted Urian drawings. Yeah, Goshkun is the favorite here, probably, right? He has to deal with the, the winner of the Pinoy Gamer B side of the bracket as well as the Combo Fiend Yanub situation here. Yanub is good too. Hmm. Bon Chan in this bracket with Punk. They just played at Dreamhack Montreal. That's crazy. Chris G on this side of the bracket with Dream Merchant Flakito. Flakito's dangerous in this bracket too. I saw Flakito beat somebody very good yesterday. Christina. Is this uh, Sarah Blast again? The artist formerly known as. Bonchan Punk again in pools is pretty wild, especially because it doesn't lead to top 16 or top 8, it leads to top 32. Yeah, Bonchan Punk is uh, surprising that they have to play, although you're probably right about seating, right? Bonchan's 11, so Punk must be like 19. What? He's lower than that? 22. Momochi. You know, the interesting thing to me about Momochi, a lot of people are always question his Colleen pick, but I think that character is perfect for him. It suits his style really well, I think. I don't know. I like him on that character. Amir. Who else is in this bracket that's dangerous? Mr. Magoo with uh, Sal Pacino and Danka Diaz. I feel like Danka Diaz has played Mago before. He said, I like Danka Diaz over Mago. We'll see. Depends on how Mago shows up. Mago, I feel like, Mago's one of those guys that like, could just, I could see him either losing to Dank Diaz in a close match or dumb string. I don't know why, but Mago, if he's on, he's on, you know what I mean? But Dank Diaz could do it. Yeah, why does Mago always lose to random, randomly to Southern California players? The Blockbuster John and Pinoy at the last Evo. Commander Jesse. Step it up, Mago. I think Momochi is pretty much the favorite for this pool, right? Yeah, I think Momochi is the favorite. Seems like his pool. Shanghai, who is so hit or miss. We'll see how he plays this weekend, I guess. In his pool, most dangerous. Uh, Pat Monster on his side, that could be an, that could be a problem for him. Eli, cool kid. That's a big problem. Cool kid, Josier, first round. Yikes! How does that happen? 
with uh, Stupendous on the other side of the bracket. You like Stupendous Sagat over Cool Kid? I don't like I don't like uh, Sagat Abigail for Sagat that much. You just walk forward duck, and if they throw a high tiger shot, you just sweep it. And if they throw a low tiger shot, your jump arc's so fucking low, you can just jump it. It happens and you don't know who Josier is? Fair enough, I guess, huh? I'm surprised. This is a first round match. That's wild to me. Shao Hai. Uh, Haitani. In Brian F's pool. <laughs> the level zero magic arm? That's tough. How are you going to win with a level zero magic arm? Storm Kubo. On LPN side of the bracket. This, this looks like a pretty high tawny pool to me, right? He has to worry about a couple of landmines. Brian F. Landmine is definitely a problem. And Storm Kubo is too. But the problem is for even if Brian F. makes it through Haitani, dealing with Storm Kubo LPN, likely Abigail, that's rough. Right? Balrog Abigail to make it out of the pool. You have to win Balrog Akuma, which I think is doable. I think Brian F. beating Haitani, it seems reasonable to me. I think Brian F. will... This is tough. I think this one's harder. If Storm Kubo makes it past everybody here, that seems tough. You like Asmic Blast over LPN? That seems like a tough call. Dogra. Man, was Dogra in Dragon Ball? He must have been, huh? Damn, 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 damn. Lud, Rama, Sama. Yeah, you mentioned that. So Dogra in this bracket. Itabashi, Zangief. Fuck. Rom? Rotten Seagull Rom is a tough first round matchup, actually. That could lead to an interesting match for Itabashi Zangief, right? He's got Birdie or uh, Fong. Brent's down here on this side of the bracket, too. This pool seems pretty tough. I don't know that I think Dogra is the favorite here, actually, right? I'm not sure who is the favorite in this bracket. Maybe Itabashi? I think I would say Itabashi is probably the favorite over Dogra. I'm not sure. It's hard to say. Yeah, Lud Ramasama. If Lud makes it past Ramasama and everybody on this side, Genius is in this bracket too. I didn't even see that, by the way. Uh, if Lud makes it past everybody against Dogra, Urian versus Minot. All right, last bracket. Akainu. As we mentioned, Akainu needs points, right? Akainu is like, uh, he's like in the late twenties range, correct? He's right past, like, qualification point. Man, I forgot this website takes forever to load. 30. Kainu's at 30 right now, so this event is a big deal for him to get points in. Um, he's pool with uh, Hungbi, Salyu. Mojo is in this pool. JB. This pool is kind of all over the place, right? I don't know who's going to make it out of this pool in Winterside. This seems like a tough pool for me to call. I don't even know who the favorite is in this bracket. Mojo, maybe? Mojo JB would happen before semis, actually. Or before, in semis, sorry. Before the uh, winter finals of the pool. This should probably end up being a Kainu versus Salyu, most likely. Although, who knows? That could be like a Salyu Mojo or a Salyu JB. That's crazy to think about, right? Mojo is very good. Interesting thing to me is, like, I want to take a peek at the top. Alright, so take, take a peek at top, top 32. And look at projected. Now, projected is just based on seeding, so it's like assuming that there's zero upsets, which is never the case. But, like, theoretically, based on this, where does everybody end up, right? Wow, you have a. First of all, you have a potential Daigo Knuckle Dew if they both make it out of their pool and winners uh, in top 32, and then the winner has to play the winner of the Fujimura side of the bracket. That's fucked up. Man, that's crazy to think about. Infiltration have to play Shao High out of bracket in top 32. Would play the winner of Oil King Momochi after. Eesh. Tokido Dogra right out of pools. Dogra had a pretty tough pool though, right? We're not sure if he's going to make it out. Itabashi Zangief's in that pool as well. And that sets up Tokido Sako or Gotchkun if they make it out in winner's side. Fudo versus Haitani. And this is the Brian F pool, right? Haitani Brian F. With winner having to play the Justin slash Bonchan side. I think that path is okay for Justin. I think Fudo would be kind of hard. That's a weird position, right? He was just struggling against Knuckle Do Mika. So I feel like, what's crazy is I feel like so many of these matches are 50-50, right? 
Like, Fujimura Daigo, I feel like it's 50-50, but I give the edge to Daigo since he got him into Panga and E-League, maybe. Topanga's recent, right? But uh, this is weird. I don't know how to call that. Infiltration Oil King. Infiltration just goes jury there, right? Oil King Momochi, I don't even know if that's like a guarantee for it. I, I don't know, that's weird. They just had that really close, long set at the, in China, right? And then you have Tokido Dogro. Which, Tokido, I feel like, should be the favorite there, but he randomly loses the Urian a lot. He seems to struggle against that character, right? He should be Dogra though. I think I like him over Dogra. But then Sako as I don't I don't like him over Sako, I don't think. That's like 50-50. Fudo Haitani, this should be probably Fudo Favor. Maybe. Yeah, Tokido loses the Yuring a lot. I don't know why. And then you have Fudo Justin, which I don't know how I mean I don't even know how to Justin bunch him. I think I like Justin's characters against Alright, I like Justin Minot against Bonchan's characters, but I don't know about this match. This match is weird, too. It leads to a pretty interesting top 8 situation. Did he lose a Dogra at the last tournament? I thought he beat Dogra. Oh, you're right. He lost to Aki and Dogra. That's right. Man, that's crazy. Yeah, he just loses to he just loses to Yuring a lot. It seems like it's a tough thing for him. When he was at Capcom Cup last year, he was playing Nemo backstage, and they played like five first to threes, and I feel like Nemo won all of them. So yeah, I'm, I don't know. I feel like that's advantage. Probably advantage. I don't know. That's hard. I feel like a player, I would give it to Tokido maybe, but Dogra, he's got a, he's got a character issue here. Loser side. Yeah, we mentioned Mojo, who has potential to make it out of winners of his pool, I think. Toy, oh my goodness. A lot of, oh man, this could be Dogra instead of Itabashi too, right? Here be Shax, this could be Sako instead of Shax. Storm Kubo, this could be anybody else actually, because Kubo might have the favorite in his pool, right? Chris ECH. Punk, this also could be Bonchan. Bonchan, John Taguchi in top three. I mean, even Punk, John Taguchi is crazy, right? Knuckle Dew. This has to be the winner of the winner of either Knuckle Dew or Daigo. If they both stay in winner side, we'll be right here, right? Losers right here and have to grind through the, the punk side into Sako potentially. Sako or um, Tokido. That could mean that if Knuckle Dew beats Daigo and Sako beats Tokido, it could be Daigo Tokido for top eight as a top eight qualifying match, right? Conversely, if they both win, I think they play in winner's side top eight, right? Oh, no, they don't. Daigo's on the other side. So they wouldn't play until winner's finals. This could be Daigo Tokido before top eight, right? For a top eight qualifier, man. That's something interesting to think about. That's why the brackets matter so much. It matters where you get sent to losers a lot of times, too, right? Because your path is different depending on when you end up in losers and stuff. It's interesting to think about. Just like it's interesting to think, Budafuka has been around for 23 long months. Thanks very much for the subscription. Man, this music is loud. I gotta turn this down a little bit. This is Infinite Azure. So we were talking about Dragon Ball earlier, right? But Dragon Ball is a, a surprisingly stacked event for a non-Saga event. There's no Dragon Ball on the line. But these two both have Dragon Balls, right? Sonic Fox and Kazunoko have Dragon Balls. Man, it's so funny because I'm looking at all the pictures of everybody, right? And it's so funny because it's like, I looked at this and I was like, yeah, that's a picture of Sonic Fox and that's a picture of Kazunoko. <laughs> I'm just so used to it, right? I was like, yeah, there's Sonic Fox. Uh, these two have Dragon Balls. Dogra, Reynolds, Breaker Dave, Cloud, uh, Super Noon. I'm surprised Super Noon's down there at 7th, actually. Um, the Kill Sage, yeah, this is a Tekken, Tekken stage. Song currently applying is Infinite Desert. Sage is gonna be here. I think Theo's here as well. So the Echo Fox Dragon Ball boys are here. Cloud's picture. <laughs> God damn it, Cloud. Where's Big Laugh? He's in Japan. I think he's vacationing, which sounds really nice, actually. Okay. Pools. Lord Foxington versus Smooth Assassin. 
Man, it looked like smooth ass to me. Sonic Fox versus smooth ass down here. He's got to defeat, potentially Sonic Fox has to fight Ball Tapper and smooth ass back to back. How's he gonna make it through this path? Eli the Curry and Dasset also in this pool. Man, this is a really small pool compared to the Street Fighter pools, right? In terms of numbers of entry. Oh, because they have the same amount of pools as Street Fighter, but I think less attendees. Kazunoko, yeah, second seed, so that makes sense. Nerd Joshington, Jeopardy in this pool. Iron God. Ooh, and Cole is in here too. So maybe a potential second round Cole match. Yikes. Reynolds bracket. Run it black entered. Oh, ESC is with run it black too? What the hell? That's crazy to think about. I didn't know that they were even doing that. Dogra. Subatomic Sabres is... Whoa, this is interesting. Subatomic Sabres is very, very good. Uh, and I think potentially second round a very dangerous opponent for Dogra to run into. Because he might not have like his homework done on a guy like this, right? This is interesting. Subatomic Sabres, if you guys don't watch Wednesday Night Fights, goes... You know, he does pretty well against most of the people there, like uh, your Reynolds and your Breaker Daves and your Super Noonsters. So he's he's definitely a dangerous uh, a dangerous player in this bracket for Dogra. Especially if he hasn't done his homework on him. If he doesn't know who he is, he plays a weird team. Burker Derv, we were just talking about him. Cool kids in here? I didn't know he played this game at all, actually. Koopa. Burker Derv. This looks like a good pool for him. I wonder where he makes it out into the top 32. Cool Kid is actually good. I haven't seen him play this game at all. That's that's interesting to me. I haven't seen him play uh, Dragon Ball at all. I didn't know he played. I believe he, he'd be good, though. That makes sense. Cloud. Coup d'etat is in this bracket. Deoxys. This looks like a Cloud bracket, as long as he doesn't mess it up. I felt like that about most brackets so far. Although, Dogra, I don't know if he has a good... I don't know. That's a little weird. The Noonster. This looks like his pool. Although, I just remember Moke is not in this bracket yet. He should be here. He plays Broly. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Cool kid on Broly. I like a Tweety in this bracket. I think he plays this game a bit, but Sage, I think, is probably the favorite. Uh, running into Dadpool could be a little weird. Dadpool, one of the Southern California players to watch, I think, in this tournament, right? Dadpool. Subatomic Sabres, I expect to have a good weekend. Uh, we'll see. Nakiel in this bracket. I forgot he was here too. Nakiel, Samij is in this bracket. He's been playing a lot on Sonic Stream. But Nakiel probably the favorite in this pool. Apology Man here too. This is going to be a great Dragon Ball bracket. You know what I like about this Dragon Ball bracket? I've been doing a lot of Dragon Ball lately, right? But you know what I like about this weekend is that I'm not working. So I'm not working Dragon Ball. So I just get to watch Dragon Ball this weekend. I don't have to commentate. I don't have to do anything too fancy. I just get to sit back and enjoy the tournament, right? Christopher Gonzalez. You know, both times I saw this guy's name, I kept thinking it was Luffy, the French player, and I was like, man. He's in Dragon Ball too. <laughs> Guamo's in that bracket. Theo, Goichi Jr. Theo versus Goichi Jr. That could be scary. Toki in that bracket, Rewind. He's been playing with Sonic also. Kendevu is surprisingly good at this game too. If you know who Kendevu is, uh, it probably shouldn't shock you. Zom, mm hmm. Zom is probably the favorite in this pool too, right? Has Marine been playing this game a lot? Marine could, I feel like Marine could be a, pr a problem if he's been playing. I don't think I've seen Daily Tame play this game though. Yeah, Kendevu is the golden fatty. He's, he's a very famous Japanese player. He just plays cheap stuff. Yeah, at Evo, he was playing Kid Buu Cell Bardock, I believe. So, yeah, I mean, that sounds about right, right? Shao Hai. I feel like I haven't seen Shao Hai play this game in forever. This is a sick pool, actually. I like this pool because I like Pinoy being in this bracket. Pinoy is... So, you've probably only seen Pinoy play Street Fighter, which makes sense, right? It's the game he's the strongest at. But he's actually very, very good at uh, this game. He's pretty good at NRS games. Plays a little bit of Tekken, but I think Dragon Ball is by far his second strongest game. Right? He's very good. And then on the other side, obviously, Nappa Pride, Coach Steve, potentially first round. Going up against the winner of this side of the bracket. I think Pinoy should probably make it here, actually. In Street Fighter 4 Arcade, Kendevu tried to get MasterCard for every character, and he got like 35 of them. 
Sounds like Kinevu. He was so good with so many fucking... Wow, Tofu and Tofu. Holy moly. Yeah, he is so good in Kinevu. I'm not surprised that he got 35 of them. Kizzy in this side of the bracket. With uh, Yahozi. Wow. This could be a tough... This could be a tough pool. Projected brackets. Sonic Fox. Ew, Sonic Fox to kill Sage. This is bad. This shouldn't be happening, right? Sonic Fox to kill Sage for top eight. That should not be happening. The kill Sage should be like down in one of these, any of these other pools, right? Sonic Fox to kill Sage for top eight. I don't like it. I don't like it one bit. There's other Echo Fox players and they're kind of farther away. Swap Shao High for the kill Sage. Whatever. Anyway. Um... Reynold Burkerder, man, even that match is a little weird, right? It's, it's a WNF match. I guess it's for top eight. It's fair enough. Kazunoko, Kizzy, Kizzy had someone else who was really good in this pool, right? Yahozi, Yahozi is in this bracket, and then uh, Super Noon, Apology Man. I feel like these guys always have to play. Then winner will play Kazunoko for top eight. That's Super Noon's path, huh? Apology Man into Kazunoko for top eight. Then if you look at the bottom here, Dogra, Shanghai. There's somebody else in Shanghai's pool that we thought might beat him, right? Panoi, maybe? And then Cloud, Chris G, winner plays Dogra. So it's Chris G, Cloud, maybe Panoi or Shanghai, Dogra in this side of the bracket. Yeesh. I'm curious about this match. So Super Noon or Apology Man, one of them will go to loser's bracket. Where do they end up? End up in this Kizzy bracket Ooh, with Toki down here and to kill Sage Sonic Fox, potentially? That's pretty scary. Super Noon, the Noonster. He would, uh, if he makes it, what's interesting is that if he makes it, if he loses to Apology Man here instead of this, he'd have to play Sage for top eight. But if he beats Apology Man and loses to Kazunoko, he has to play likely Nokiel for top eight, and that's assuming Nokiel loses to Sage. Ooh, so he might run into Sage either way. Dogra will beat Cloud, why I gotta do your mans like that? I don't do, look, it's a button on Smash.gg. I didn't do anything. It's just a button based on seating. I promise it wasn't me. 